stocks get tired. We get tired, stocks get tired. You need a breath, and that's exactly where we are. You have to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly update show. Hope everybody is doing good. So after a seven and a half point, uh, seven and a half percent, long day, seven and a half percent move on uh, the NASDAQ last week, the question was, what was going to happen next? Can we thrive and build off of the 20 day moving average we talked about on the nightly video, the worst case scenario that we talked about uh, was going to be two twofolds, either uh, gap and roll over, lose the 20 day moving average, or in a weird way for intraday traders, which almost is worse than that, is sit there and digest recent gains, yada, 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 here we are. Um, yeah, that's exactly what we did today. We, we literally digested uh, recent gains. We talked about this at Morning Strategy today. There was a, it was an outside chance that we were going to sit there and just kind of watch, uh, watch um, you know, the raindrops, right? right? Watch the raindrops, uh, you know, chase each other on a rainy day. And that's exactly what happened. And that's a good thing. It, it, you know, it, again, sometimes, you know, your day-to-day -day activities are not going to translate on the ledger, but at least it is giving you the bigger picture. And that's the most important part. And when you look at last week versus, versus where we see uh, the action today, it's a completely uh, nominal give back. And that's the most important thing after a huge, huge run up, um, fractional losses, two tenths, three tenths across the board uh, in the Dow, the S&P uh, and the NASDAQ, the, the Russell, the IWM actually squeaked out a little bit of a gain, but more important is to kind of give you a picture why this rest is necessary. So Tesla last week literally went from 639 this morning, beautiful run into the into the upper channel, into the 756 level. You're talking about 120 points in five days, right? Five days, it was down two bucks today, right? Amazon, that's not gonna look as impressive as Tesla, but again, remember it's 20 times more than it was. If you look where it was only five days ago, we went from 103 and Amazon went to 118. So, and you and you go down the whole row of every NASDAQ name and the point is everything rested today, which is fine. Here's kind of like you know, the point that we talk about, the devil's advocate, right? The worst case scenario. If you guys remember, we had uh, a really good move above the 20 day moving average um, on May the 27th. And this resulted in about a two week distribution. Now, hope to God and hope the market gods are, are listening and really paying attention and hopefully, um, you know, going to give us what I'm asking for. Hopefully this distribution is only one or two days and then we resume the uptrend and start attacking this linear regression line of 300 bucks and ultimately attacking uh, the 50 day moving average of 305. Again, nobody could control price action, right? As much as we want every single day to be super aggressive, super violent, you know, expansion channels. Again, rest is good. And, you know, again, I've, I've used this analogy time and time again. You run a 26 mile rep marathon, you got your hands up in the air, right? And then they tell you at the finish line, by the way, it's not a marathon, it's a triathlon. You still have to swim and you have to bike. You, stocks get tired. We get tired, stocks get tired. You need a breath and that's exactly where we are. You have to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt until what happens, right? You see this right here? Until we gave up the 20 day moving average after re reclaiming it here. So the most important part of all this equation is this 290 area. The longer we build above this 290 area, the higher probability these stocks will get their second wind and right and go higher. Again, nobody's talking about the bear market is over and nobody's talking about this was the bottom. Maybe it is, maybe it's not, who cares? It's, it's, it's all about, you know, it, it's all about what happens next and preparing for it. As an intraday trader, yes. I would love to see every single day go bananas, go buck wild, and it's just not the reality. Okay, the, I've been saying this for years. The market doesn't care what we, you know, what we want. Okay, it's the market that we have, not the market what we want. But the most important part is on this little pullback today. And again, this was all a nice decompression. You know, stretch the arms, stretch the legs, stretch the back. You know, just to get a little bit of downtime for these stocks to kind of get their feet under them. There was no violence. 
There was no selling pressure. Even the stocks that had the biggest runs, and you arguably had the biggest runs over the last month or so, these EV Chinese stocks, which I think there could be a trade there. And I'll talk about that in a second. Even they, you know, they got back to the rising five-day support. And you can see this every time it guts to the five-day support, it goes back higher. Even they got back to this five-day support, kind of, you know, yawned a little bit and started moving back uh, into the upside. But there is a trade, right? And we're always looking for a trade. For, for the stocks that are the Teslas of the world, the Amazons of the world, uh, and the apples and, and all that stuff, yes. We, we kind of want to, unless they really, really wake up tomorrow, which will be a very pleasant surprise, okay? I think we have to start looking at, maybe not for everybody, but for me, these are B and C level stocks, not B level, B and C level setups, but B and C level stocks. So for example, if the EVs are hot, on my mother-in-law, I would not be trading XPV, I'd be trading Tesla. Right. If the you know if uh, for example if Tesla's going crazy, I'm not going to say, well, watch Li. That's going to go. But beggars can't be choosers. For so for Tesla waiting and for Tesla kind of being nice and calm and Amazon being nice and calm, we have to find a game plan that we can take advantage of. So the theme of stocks resting, right? Stocks resting and taking a breather. Well, that's when we have to start looking at the Li's. And if, and if you go and if you go through this chart, you see how it held this double bottom perfectly on this rising five-day support. See, I'm watching this thing to the downside tomorrow. If this thing starts losing this five-day channel, again, if you've been watching this broadcast for any amount of time, you know how important uh, the five-day moving average is for me. So if you're looking at the five-day and it touched it perfectly today, if it confirms the five-day moving average, then we got about four or five dollars of downside to the 10-day moving average. A name like XPEV, and again, this is a theme here, right? The China, uh, China, uh, China EVs. You notice it stopped perfectly the same way LI stopped. The, the low here is 3383. The low here is 8382, right? Can you guess where it needs to break down? So I'm watching the bottom of the channel here as well. Look at Neo. Big, you know, big put buyers coming in all day, right? It stopped right at the five day moving average. If Neo confirms the five day moving average tomorrow, look how much room it has down. So again, are these the stocks that I'm waking up tomorrow and go, wow, I can't wait, man. This is going to be awesome. No. It's the market we have, not the market we want. So these are definitely on my watch. Names like a Coinbase and, and literally of all the stocks today, of all the pivots today, we had literally only one stock confirmed. And today was Coinbase, right? Coinbase uh, got downgraded today, Goldman Sachs. It took out this 59 pre-market low and closed right pretty much on the lows. This thing starts losing 55 tomorrow. I think this thing goes lower. This is literally the only organic pivot today uh, that that you know that did anything. Nothing else confirmed. There was a couple of bounce plays, you know, that stole out a little bit. Not here, not there. You know, no, nothing earth shaking. But as far as natural pivots goes, there was absolutely nothing because that's what happens in digestion. Remember, if you're trying to trade an expansion channel while an ex while a contraction channel is going on. You're going to completely churn yourself to death. You're going to burn a lot of mental equity. And when two days come by and the channels start expanding again, you're not going to know the difference between a, between a contraction channel and an expansion channel. And you're going to trade it exactly the same way. Fortunately, we've been doing this for a while, right? This is not our first rodeo. We kind of know exactly what distribution looks like. We kind of know uh, the and understand the importance of a rest. And that's exactly what the market did. So if you look at the overall uh, spectrum of the market, again, this is all you need to know. Anything above 290, we give the bulls continuous, uh, we give the bulls a, the continuous benefit of the doubt. First close below the, the, the 20 day moving average. You can see what happened here the first day below the 20. We got absolutely manhandled for the next week, that will be obviously a big red signal above the 290 level. It's obviously give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. As far as the spies go, you know, again, same thing. The spies went in the last, you know, six days from 362, you know, to 391. That's a huge, huge move. Again, they need to rest. The only thing that, again, if, if you play devil's advocate, the only thing that we saw today that was a little bit interesting and kind of like we kind of raised our eyebrows Mid-morning, we started seeing some really aggressive bets in the options market, short-term expiration, deep out of the money puts on both the IWM and the SPIs. You're talking about you know tens of millions of dollars uh, worth of premium being put on the table. So that's something we have to watch. Now, again, we don't know if they know something, you know, the old adage on social media, somebody knows something, right? Maybe somebody does, maybe somebody doesn't, or they're just guessing. 
right? All they're gonna guessing. And the last thing you wanna do as a trader is absolutely guess. It's going to kill you, especially if you're trading on the option side. If you're trading on the option side, you're fighting time, you're fighting price, but more important, you're fighting time. And the most important part of that is if you're anticipating it stalls out in that channel, you're gonna get squeezed back and your premium disappears a long life if, if existence. I don't know what the hell I just said there, but it sounded good in my head. After a while, after six, seven hours of speaking, you can't get the words out. This is called the wrong side of 40. So anyway, that's the case, guys. I have a basketball game to attend to. Hopefully, the channels will wake up tomorrow. Hopefully, we will put ourselves in a situation of strength. But the most important part is we understand what we're up against here. We understand what we're not up against here. And the most important part is we understand how to navigate those markets. Guys, have a great night. God bless. And I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.